Hey everyone, what's up? It's Ryan Groose from The Loop Loft, and today we're gonna work inside of Reason 6, and I'm gonna show you how to make linear drum loops. Um, if you don't know what a linear drum loop is, or linear drumming is, um, it's a style where no two limbs hit at the same time, for the most part. So a kick drum will hit, um, you know, one and three, or, or anywhere, anywhere else in the bar. Um, snare drum typically on the back beat, and hi-hats filling in the spaces. Um, but they never all come together at once. And probably the best example of linear drumming is uh, the famous uh, Paul Simon song, 50 Ways to Leave Your Lover, where Steve Gadd um, lays out sort of a, a snare drumming march groove that um, has a lot of kick drum and hi-hat interplay. And if you listen to it, it's actually nothing's really playing at the same time, um, but it all flows and weaves in the 16th note pattern. So for today's example, um, I'm using uh, one of our latest refills that we did for Reason, it's the uh, Indie Rock Drums Volume 2 uh, set. And from that, um, I'm using uh, two of the combinators we created. Um, one's called the Dirty Robot, um, and it features uh, a bunch of Dr. Octorex patches. Uh, the one queued up here is uh, one called the White Keys, um, which you might have guessed is modeled after the Black Keys drum sound. And in the other combinator patch we have, um, it's one called the Mangler, um, which uses some cool uh, pulverizer patches and echo and uh, really pushes things uh, to the limit. And inside of that, we're using a, a redrum to trigger uh, um, some of the drum samples. And the patch that I have queued up right now is our Fugazi um, drum samples, which are modeled after, you might have guessed, uh, the band Fugazi, a really uh, aggressive kind of biting snare drum, which you'll hear in a minute. Um, all pretty in your face. So to get started, um, I'm just going to fire up this first drum loop from the White Keys uh, um, patch. And as you'll hear, it's a fairly straightforward, you know, indie rock groove. Um, and it's definitely not linear. It's, you hear the hi-hat playing straight eighth notes, and the kick drum is on one and uh, three and, and there's some... Uh, snare back beats, but everything's kind of lying up on, on top of each other. So using slice edit mode, I'm going to go in and just pull out certain elements of the groove that I want to retain. And I'm just going to go for a snare back beats right now, and maybe some other random bits. I'm going to pull them up so they're a little louder. So right now, if you're listening to it, it doesn't sound like much of a groove. You hear a little bit of the backbeat, um, but we've totally deconstructed it and we're just keeping in um, a few elements. So now it's fairly uh, linear in, in nature. But you're asking yourself, well, how can I make this into a song? Um, we need some some kick drums and and some more flow in there. So that's when we bring in the other combinator uh, using redrum, and I'm going to use this to kind of fill in the gaps, the linear gaps. So um, I'm going to look for spots where I can lay down a kick drum and a hi hat and maybe a ride cymbal and kind of work around the framework um, that I've created uh, with the Doctor Octo Doctor Octorex player. Um, by pulling away and stripping away um, a lot of that, that traditional pop groove we started. So I'm gonna fire up this groove again. And again, we're just kind of hearing the parts we left. And now I'm gonna go over to the other combinator and uh, start running the step sequencer and cue up a bass drum here. And on one, I'm gonna put. So now you'll hear it. There's a groove starting to come together. And on this uh, combinator patch, you'll notice there's a dotted eighth note delay um, on each drum hit, which gives it a great syncopation and really helps fill in uh, this kind of linear style we're going for. Um, and maybe I'm going to add a ride cymbal bell. Let's do it on the end of four here. And 
now let's do a close hi hat on the end of one and end of two and the end of three. And let's grab another snare on four. Mix that in a little bit. So cool, now we've got a completely different groove um, than what we started out with, which, which was that traditional, you know, indie pop rock, straight A thing. But yet we're still utilizing uh, that snare drum and that patch in the combinator. So now we can go back and start using some of those combinator effects we have queued up. So um, let's look here. We've got uh, the robot. We want to kind of robot, robot size the snare drum. Turn a resonator on. Get crazy with some panning delays. Gator effects going on. You can hear some uh, sixteenth note bubbling kind of action going on. And another nice thing you can do is you can switch um, the loop slots over to back to a more traditional loop for a second. If you want to hear what that sounds like? There it is. It kind of fills everything back up again. And then if you want to strip it down again, go back to. So this is a great way to kind of build up A and B sections of your song. So if you wanted to go back to the B section, everything fills up again. And then likewise, you can use some of the combinator effects uh, over here on the Mangler. So I have an echo effect called Stone Roll. Let's turn that on. Crazy 3 over 4 polyrhythms. Do that in a clock, ra the clock radio effect. And you can bring it back into the beat. So there you go. That is my quick tutorial on linear loops. Um, there's a million ways you could experiment with this and it totally opens up, you know, uh, brand new composition ideas as soon as you start stripping away the elements and uh, finding the, the right gaps to uh, make things syncopate and uh, flow in, in, in ways you've probably never programmed beats before. So um, hope you learned something today. Uh, keep swinging by the loop loft for more videos and I uh, hope to see you again soon. All right guys, take care.